Before we get started, I just wanted to take a minute and ask for your help. So since 2014, Ascension has been producing YouTube videos and podcasts and articles free online. In fact, every week, there are 18 different Ascension Presents videos or podcasts that are offered to the world for free. And in fact, millions of people have been reached by the message of God's love. While these podcasts and while this content, these videos are free to consume, they're not necessarily free to make. And with the rising costs of everything, um, we're kind of in a little bit of a pickle. We might need, well, here we are, needing to ask for your help and your support. If someone you love, if you yourself have been blessed by the content that's been produced by Ascension, would you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry by going to ascensionpress.com support or even following the link in the description below. That's ascensionpress.com support. And even if you're not able to uh, support this ministry financially, we are begging that you please support this ministry spiritually. Please pray for us, pray for the entire Ascension team. And ahead of time, thank you and God bless. Shoot, shooty patootie, as they say. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz and this is Ascension Presents. So what is it about the celebration of Thanksgiving that is not just good to do, but is actually something necessary and the kind of thing that can set us free from one of the worst <laughs> internal dispositions you possibly, possibly could have. Okay, that sounds like a word salad. Here's what I mean. There are some times when in your life or my life, we recognize, man, I am so proud. Like I've, not, not in a good way, not in the way of like, hey, I'm really proud. Like I did something good. Or I'm really proud of my country. I'm really proud of my family. I'm really proud of my, my sister, my brother, whoever it is. Not like that. That's, that's a good kind of pride but like the vice pride, right? The kind of pride that gets in the way, ruins your day, ruins your life, <laughs> ruins your heart. You know, pride is called the mother of all the vices. The Book of Wisdom says, through the envy of the devil, death entered the world. But that it was pride in some way that uh, caused Satan to rebel against God and to reject God. And so we recognize in ourselves, hey, if you recognize pride in yourself, that's a really, really good thing because Pride is one of those things that we can often recognize it in someone else and we don't necessarily recognize it very well in ourselves. So if you recognize pride in yourself, that's a really good first step. And secondly, if you don't like it and you want to get rid of it, that's a really good thing as well. So in order to recognize pride and want to get rid of pride, we have to understand, well, what is pride? So there's a couple definitions the church offers. The first definition the church offers is pride is an excessive love of one's own excellence. Now let's highlight this. Pride is the excessive love of one's own excellence. Three things to note. Number one, excellence. We should be striving for excellence, right? As human beings and as Catholic Christians, in all things, we should be striving for excellence. I should strive to be an excellent human being, an excellent Christian. I should strive to be an ex whatever your vocation is, mother or father, butcher, baker, candlestick maker, doctor, whatever the thing is. We should strive for excellence in all things. So striving for excellence, amazing. Achieving excellence, remarkable. Well done, good on you. So that's a good thing. We need to strive for excellence. Secondly, Excessive love of one's own excellence. Second word, love. Here's the thing. The problem is not, is not loving oneself. The problem is not loving the excellence one has achieved. That actually is necessary. In fact, it's kind of commanded. We're kind of commanded to love ourselves. Remember the great commandments? The first great commandment, to love God with everything you've got. And the second great commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself. If that second great commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself, there's an implication there, right? The implication is you actually love yourself. If you're gonna love your neighbor as yourself and that's a good thing, then we should actually love ourselves. So here's the definition of love, as you probably have heard a thousand times. Love is willing the good of the other. So if I love the other, I will their good. If you love yourself, you're willing the good of yourself. That's, that's in some ways you say all that it means. Maybe that's the heart, the kernel, the, the core of what it means. So. Love is willing the good of the other. So we should strive for excellence, yes. We should have some degree as Catholic Christians, as disciples of Jesus. There should be a degree to which we actually love ourselves. That's very important. Sometimes it's really hard to do, but it is kind of a command. So we have to strive to love ourselves. The problem is that first word. Pride is the excessive love of one's own excellence. That is no longer ordinate, right? It's no longer appropriate. It's come to the place where leads to the second definition. The second definition, I'm going to be a little loosey-goosey with it, but it basically is the excessive love of one's own excellence that leads a person to reject the fact that they are subject to God. Because if I'm self-satisfied, right? If, I, if I'm like, no, I am the answer to everything. I'm 
preoccupied with my own world, not only does that world become so small because it becomes only the size of myself, not only does that world become so small, it becomes drab. It becomes a battle to continue to be worthy of the excessive love that I've already given myself as opposed to having the appropriate love of self and then being able to rejoice in humility. That's the thing because humility is the remedy for pride. So humility is the remedy for pride. So all these definitions today, I apologize, but here's the definition of humility. C.S. Lewis started it and the, the pastor Rick Warren kind of finished it. Um, where C.S. Lewis pointed out that humility is not thinking less of yourself, right? Humility is, does not consist of a, a attractive person thinking they're unattractive or of a smart person thinking they're not smart or of a kind person thinking they're not kind. Like that's not, that's not true. That's not humility. So Pastor Rick Warren said, humility is not thinking less of yourself. Humility is thinking of yourself less. So it's that sense of, I realize, okay, I'm not the star of this show. I'm not the center. The prideful person, they have to be the center. The prideful person, even if they think poorly of themselves, the prideful person puts themselves in the center because they're constantly preoccupied with themselves. And that can lead to what? It leads to rejecting the fact that I'm subject to God. So how do I become humble in order to kill pride? Do I just start thinking humble thoughts? Great question, Camper. I think there's an easier way. I think there's a more straightforward and direct way. And that way is gratitude. That path is thanksgiving. Here's what I mean. The prideful person, they're preoccupied with themselves. The prideful person looks around and says their excessive love of one's own excellence. Here's all that I've done that leads me to reject the fact that I'm subject to God, that, that there's others in this world who actually give me things that I don't deserve. Gratitude is the ability, the capacity to acknowledge the fact that I have gifts that don't come from me, that are, that are gifts that, you know, my parents or my country or my friends or strangers or at the top of the, the charts, God himself has given me and is acknowledging those gifts and saying thank you to the one who is the author of those gifts. So that means saying thank you to those parents or to those friends or to that country or to that God. See, gratitude Gratitude is the best way to grow in humility because we look around this incredible world looking at your life, whether your life is in a, in a, in a slump, in a, life is in a tragic place. Even there, we recognize that there are always things that I can be grateful for because there's always gifts. As long as I have life, as long as I have breath in my lungs, there's something to be grateful for. And it's basically looking for the source of that gift and simply saying thank you. When that happens, I become humble because I realize there is so much in this world that I didn't deserve that I continue to receive. When I'm humble, there's no room for pride. So here's my invitation. We sometimes wait for gratitude to happen. We sometimes just like, wait, I'll wait till I feel grateful, till I feel thankful. That's not bad. It's, it's okay. I would invite you to be intentionally grateful. What I mean by that is something like this. Every morning, I think of three or five things. Every night, I think of three or five things that I've received that I didn't deserve. That just were gifts to me. And that could be the fact that I can get up out of this chair and walk. It could be the fact that I open my eyes and I can see. It could be the fact that um, I know how to read. That could be the fact that um, you have people in your life that actually care about you. It could be the fact that you have work that you find meaningful. Whatever that thing is, to be able to pause, to note the gift, and then thank the giver of the gift. I'm telling you, that will not only increase humility, which kills pride, it will also increase joy. Because gratitude does so much in our lives. It destroys that pride, it destroys that small life, and opens us to have a heart and a life that is so much bigger because it's full of not just myself, it's full of all of these people, all of these beings, including the being, right? God himself, that I get to thank. And life not only becomes freer, not only do I become more humble, but also more joyful and more filled with that great gift that we call life. Anyways, that's my invitation. For all of us here to Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.